The song says he treats me best, I often say. But then all my father's children feel that way. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, and I sure is good to see you here this evening. Thank you for coming. Appreciate everybody being in the, in the service tonight. Uh, and I hope that you've uh, been here every night. The Lord's been good to me. I've been blessed. I always get a blessing when I come here. And I appreciate uh, Pastor Bill and Brother Stan and all you folks. Uh, keep, keep, this, keep the ship sailing. Amen. Sail on, y'all. Sail on. Won't be as long as it has been. That's right. We're going to cross over one of these days. Right. And our journey will be over. The battles will be won. And we'll be home with Jesus forever and ever and ever. And we will understand it better by and by. Right. Somebody said, earth is the place for trust. Heaven's the place for understanding. There's a lot of things that happen down here we don't under, you can't understand. We trust him now. We'll understand then. Amen. 1 Samuel 17. When I announce 1 Samuel 17, if you're a Bible studier, reader, your mind immediately goes to this famous story of David uh, as he fights the giant Goliath. Yeah. Now tonight, I want to definitely use that story, maybe in a different way than what you've heard it before. It's been preached a hundred different ways, I'm sure. Uh, but this one may be different than uh, you've ever heard. So we'll look in this story here this, this evening. And I want to I wanna go back, start with verse number uh, 33. You see verse 33? When him and Saul is having this conversation about him going to fight this giant. Right. And uh, the Bible said here, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able. Yeah. See, yeah. Humanly speaking, that's true. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, David by himself was no match for that guy. Right. Thou art not able uh, to go against the Philistine, right. to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. Yeah. David, we, we hear in this story, was maybe 16, 17 years old. That's what uh, Bible scholars say. Uh, but uh, he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, let me tell you something, Saul. Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Yep. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now, uh, look down there at verse 39. David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Look at verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Look at verse 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. And now look at verse number 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it. That's a good word, slang. He slang that thing at him, buddy. Knocked his brains out. That sounds like something he'd say where I come from. We'd say slung, uh, but it's the same word. Slung it at him. And smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Yep. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith, 
And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Yeah. Now you look back at verse number uh, uh, 40, 40, verse 40, where it said there, David took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones. The title of the message tonight is that three words, five smooth stones. Amen. And my message tonight is why David chose five smooth stones. Stones. Now this is one of the greatest, most exciting stories in the entire Bible. No doubt about it. Uh, not just in the Bible, but of all literature uh, uh, around the world and in history. Uh, millions, millions of kids have sat spellbound in a little Sunday school class as the teacher got up and told this story of David fighting this giant. Many, many. I uh, have listened, uh, millions have sat uh, in uh, congregations, <laughs> excuse me, and heard preachers expound yeah. the great noble lessons taught here right. of this classic story in, in the Bible. Thousands of children, including me when I was a little kid, yeah. sat at mama's knee and heard mama tell about David, the little yeah. boy, yeah. going up and fighting this giant, giant and winning. And as a matter of fact, this story has impacted uh, world thought and literature. You, you, you hear them in, uh, in the sports world. If you listen to these sports announcers, they'll have this big team, you know, and they're up here and they're 23 and 0, you know, or something, and it's uh, conference time. And then you got this little underdog team coming up that uh, somehow or another made it to the playoffs. And they say, boy, it would be, it, it's just like David and Goliath. You know, they still say that to this day in sports. Isn't that, isn't that something? How much influence that Bible has had on people that don't even believe it uh, in, in the news, in courtrooms. Uh, Your Honor, it was like David and Goliath. See, everybody knows what that means. What a story, y'all. What a story. Ain't nothing like that in the Koran, I guarantee it. Uh, they, it's a story here of David and Goliath. And uh, uh, it's been preached hundreds of different ways. Tonight, I want us to look at that uh, one thought, five smooth stones. Now, uh, as you know, most uh, people would say that giant, that David, the, the giant Goliath was uh, nine, nine cubics, uh, and uh, they, they would say that uh, it, it, a, a cubic, six cubits and a span, and six and a half, something like that. But anyway, it turned out to be nine and a half feet. Now, that would be the um, modern day definition of a cubic. A cubic would be from here to here, approximately 18 inches. But if they went by the Egyptian cubic, which was prevalent in that time, uh, Goliath was much taller. I tend to think he was, pro he was 13 feet tall. And uh, that's a little one compared to some of them dudes back in there. How do you think them pyramids got built, brother? Don't, I mean, anybody dumb enough to believe the Discovery Channel and the History Channel, well, they got 10 million slaves dragging one of them rocks. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh, how'd they lift them rocks? Listen, they got Trilithon uh, rocks over yonder in Baalback, Lebanon. That, that's uh, that's long, long as this church, and big as that wall right there, and weigh over 100 tons, brother. 100 tons. Every Egyptian in the world couldn't lift them up uh, three, three stories high and place them block. Somebody bigger than me and you did that. You say, well, now you're insulting their ingenuity. Look, people, uh, you're insulting their ingenuity. If they could have done it, why would they? Why in the world make a rock so big you can't move it? Wouldn't they have used something that could lift? They're pretty dumb if they made a rock so big you couldn't move them. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, they was big. He was big. Now you take a man standing here tonight whose head would be touching that light right there. He'd have some arms that big around. I mean, he'd pick up his pulpit one hand and throw it through that wall back there. I mean, he could take Mike Tyson and just flip him on the head like that and he'd be out for good. Uh, he could take a uh, 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 very strong, he's a very strong man. And no way in the world any normal person, especially a young teenage boy, could fight that giant. This story represents tonight 
all the things that me and you face. You know, me and you still face giants. These young people here tonight, they're facing giants. They're facing the giant of drugs. They're facing the giant of temptation and all kinds of sin. And there's no way in the world y'all can win in your own strength. You're going to have to have the Lord. Uh, so, uh, you're going to have to have the Lord with you like David did. And the Bible said that he went and fought this giant. I'll not go into the Bible numerology for the number five. Most preachers say it represents grace, but I mean, that's a stretch, really. Uh, uh, most people believe that. I don't know. Uh, there's a good indication in a lot of Scripture that the number five represents not maybe just grace, but death. Yeah. Death. Amen. D-E-A-T-H. The first man that ever lived on this earth died in Genesis 5 and verse 5. Cain, the first man that ever was born in this world, was a murderer. And he had five fingers on his toe. The international SOS distress signal is 500 kilos, kilowatts, kilos, uh, cycle. May Day is when a ship is, is crashing or a plane going down. January, February, March, April, May. Jesus had five wounds in his body as they killed him on the cross. And on and on and on and on and on and on and on. The fifth cherub would be Satan there uh, that was anointed there before God removed him off of the, off of the uh, cherubim place that he had. Now, so tonight, David chose. Here is David. He's going to fight this giant. And they said, well, uh, how are you going to do this? And he goes down to the river and he looks down there and he goes, one... There wasn't no special stones until he got a hold of them. That's right. That's right. And as soon as he got a hold of them and put them in that bag, they am That's some right. special yeah. stones. Yeah. And he put another in there. That's three, four, five. Why did he do that? Why five smooth stones? I sat down and I asked myself that question. If David's faith was in God and he knew the Lord's going to do it, why Five smooth stone. Now, I'll give you my three answers quick, and then I'll bring you a thought for the message. First, he, he might have thought he might miss him. He might have thought, well, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a, that dude, he's pretty, I, I, better, I better get him. What if, I, what if I'm running this way, and he's running that way, and I miss him? I better have me another. And what if, I, what if he dodges and ducks? I better get me another one. And then what if he... What if he bends over and I'm, I better give me another one. Maybe he thought that. I doubt it, but maybe he did. Now, there's nothing wrong with over-preparing, right? Yeah, man. Amen. I mean, uh, he, he was saying, now, look, I, I won't get him, but, you know, having five rocks ain't going to hurt nothing. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with over-preparing. Sometimes when we prepare, people say, well, you don't have no faith. And you're like, no, I don't believe there's nothing wrong. You know, here, here's my philosophy. Now, my philosophy, and I've told people this for years, I think you ought to do this. I think you ought to expect the worst. Yep. You ought to hope for the best. Yep. And then take what comes, keep your mouth shut, and thank God you ain't in hell. Amen. That's some good advice right there. Amen. People say, well, don't you think you should hope for the best? No, because the best don't usually happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you expect the worst, right. hope for the best, yeah. and take whatever comes, keep your mouth shut, and thank God you ain't in hell burning. Amen. That way you'll live a good life. That's right. That's right. And so maybe he thought he missed. Not only that, maybe he thought he might have to hit him five times. He said, that dude, his skin's that thick. Lord, that guy, his skull probably. Good night, like, like harder than that right there. He, he's a big guy. Maybe I'll hit him with this and in the head. And then maybe I'll hit him with this and in the back of the head. And then maybe I'll hit him with that in his back behind him. Maybe I'll hit him right in the gut with this and uh, maybe I'll hit him in the nose with that. Maybe he thought that he'd have to hit him five times. I don't know. I, I doubt that. But uh, maybe, maybe, maybe he done. And see, all them people had been discouraging him. Yeah. Saul had just told him, you can't do this, buddy. You can't do that. There's always some brother in the Lord. Uh, yeah. Make sure you get real discouraged and tell you you can't do uh, whatever you, you're up against. You know, you might. I had people tell me that a long time ago. They said, Danny, you'll never make it. Thank you for that word of encouragement. That was a real blessing to me. <laughs> Uh, uh, and I, 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 there's always somebody like, Saul was a real encouragement. You're a youth boy. He, he'd been fighting battle all night. You ain't no way you can ever do that. What are they, if you're waiting on people to encourage you before you do anything for God, you're going to have a long way. Amen? That's right. And uh, maybe he thought that. I don't know. I doubt it. Or 
the standard belief on this, why he chose five smooth stones is that he knew that giant had four brothers. And he did. And some of them was his sons, but his brothers. Listen to rap music for the definition of that. And ladies and gentlemen, they, they, he was, they, this giant had four brothers. And it names them over there in 1 Chronicles 20, Sipha, Saf, Lema, and Ishbanab. And come to find out, Shimei and David's men did wind up having to have kill all of them guys. So Goliath had four brothers. So maybe, maybe David went down there and said, that one's for Goliath, that one's for Ishbanab, this one's for Sam, this is for big boy that thinks he's so bad, and he put them in there, and maybe did. I, I, don't know, I doubt that, but it makes good preaching. And, uh, and uh, he, he might have done that. I don't know that. But we do know that David and his men were responsible for all them other four guys dying too. Maybe it was like this. Maybe David was going back home and he's keeping his father's sheep and one day he got a text come in from Shimei and Shimei said, David, uh, did you know that guy, had, do you have any more of them rocks? <laughs> uh, you got any more of them rocks you hit that guy with? Can I please have one? David put that thing in the mail overnighted it right to Shimei. He got that, and buddy, I tell you what, that was a special rock. Listen, I'd rather be in front of a, I'd rather be in front of a 747 coming right at me instead of a rock that God Almighty was in. Uh, you ain't gonna, he ain't gonna miss. He ain't gonna miss. He'll knock you smack dab between the eyeballs. Uh, smack dab is a Greek term that you uneducated people may not understand, that it means right in the midst of. Uh, uh, us, hillbilly education uh, understands that. And so he, he did that. I don't know. But the Bible said these fell by the hand of David. I don't, I don't really know why he got five smooth stones. I don't. And I don't know if anybody else does either. But that makes a good explanation than any other that I've ever heard. And David got the job done. Now, uh, let, me, let me say this. That David had got these experiences and he's out here keeping the sheep. It's amazing how many of those men in the Bible that you read about were keeping sheep when God called them. God never did call somebody sitting on the throne, maybe David and Solomon, a couple like that. Nine times out of ten, he went right by the governor, right by the mayor, right by the president, right by them, and kept finding an old boy out here keeping the sheep. That's what he does. That's what he does, keeping the sheep. You know who God, if God's going to do something, you know who he talks to? He talks to a man that's keeping the sheep. That's right. That's right. If Jesus come back to America today, he wouldn't go straight to the White House. Lord have mercy. They ain't got enough sense up there to even understand uh, what he's talking about. Uh, he would go right where men are keeping sheep. That's right, brother. And that's what David was doing. So David was out there one day, and he's keeping his father's sheep. And this way he told Saul. He said this. Uh, he, he said, Saul, he said, I was out there keeping my daddy's sheep one day. And he said these, they all of a sudden, light come out of the woods. And he said, light, and he had teeth that long. And he had a big old line there. And he said, he going to grab one of my daddy's sheep. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord come on me. And he said, I grabbed that line. I got him by his beard. I punched him in the nose. I, I, I karate chopped him in the neck. I throwed him over the bank and killed him. And he said, it wasn't a day or two later, a bear bear come up out of, the, out of the woods. And this bear come up out of the woods. You know, we got, we got bears up, we had a bear in my, in my yard not long ago. Uh, come in the backyard, right down the hill. Man, them things are bad news, buddy. They'll slap your brains out. And uh, if you don't, you don't mess with them things. And you know what? They, they, he said, a bear come. And he's getting ready to get my father's sheep. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord Come upon me. He said, I grabbed that bear. He said, I jujitsu him. I, I karate chopped him. I hit him. And I knocked him off down in the mouth. And he said, This, 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 the Lord that delivered me out of the hand of the bear and out of the paw of the lion shall deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine who has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, I'm going to go. And David went and he killed the giant. So, uh, they say, I'll give you three things and I'll be done. Uh, listen carefully. You know what this story shows? Number one, it shows God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. I'm here to tell y'all tonight, brother, our God is sovereign. And I'm going to tell you something else. He ain't up in heaven worrying about who's going to win the election. 
We are, but he ain't. He's got it all under control. And when everything's said and done, brother, he'll be right there on the throne where he's always been. I'm telling you tonight, our God ain't never took a baby aspirin, brother, worrying about what's going on and what's in D.C. He's not worried about mine and your battle, mine and your problem. Hallelujah, people. He's, he, he's sovereign. If I don't shut up, I'm going to run out in the highway and shout a little bit. Our God's sovereign tonight. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. Uh, as, as, uh, he, he's sovereign. That means, that means he knows everything. That means nothing takes him by surprise. He's omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. And he knew how this thing was going to turn out. And prepared David for it. See? Now think about this. Probably, if I'd have been David, and I'd been out there keeping my father's sheep, and a lion come up, and here I had that line might have scratched him, might have got a little blood on him. I don't know. He, he might have injured David a little bit. Don't say he didn't. And David came back in. Shoo, Lord, good night, Lord. Am I doing something wrong? Why'd that line come out of there on me like that? I thought I'd serving you, man. I'd lay out here and play my harp and sing every night. And so quote, I wrote the 23rd Psalm. Good night, Lord. How come? How come this is happening to me? What I'm saying is, David didn't understand what the purpose was right. of that line. Right. That's right. Glory to God, people. Yeah. Are you listening to me tonight? Yeah. Hey, are you, are you hearing me saying to God? Yeah. When he was fighting that line, he probably thought, God, why, why? Lord, that's, I've fought a few lines in our church, and I'm sure y'all, I'm sure Br Brother Bill has fought his share of lines. They might be one here tonight. I don't know. Uh, uh, they'll claw your eyes out yeah. uh, and give you a fit. And, and, and David said, that bear come out there. And I don't know what I thought I was doing right. And I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. Not that thing like to kill me. And, and he scratched my arms. And I had to go home and put a good night, all kind of uh, medicine on, my, on me and, uh, and, and rub ointment on me and everything else. God bleeding all over me and everything. God, why? But did you understand the sovereignty of God? Yeah. When David fought the big man, right. when the big trial come, when the real battle come, you know what gave, listen, you know what gave David confidence and faith in God? Amen. Them battles that he'd already been through. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, people. I'm telling you tonight, when you're going through a storm, when you're going through a battle, all that is is God getting you ready for when the big one comes, brother. You can put you say, hey, I went through that and I went through that and, and I can go through this and by the grace of God. Woo! Glory to God. I'm glad that God's sovereign. You know, I've been through some hard times in my life. You hear me? You see me up here running around screaming and hollering. You think, boy, he's had it made. I ain't always had it made. I still don't as far as this world's concerned. I've fought a lot of battles. And you know, a lot of times I thought, God, what in the world? Why is this happening to me? And then later on down the road, I'd meet somebody and they would be going through the same thing. And I can say, look, buddy, Amen. God's faithful. He can get you through this. He can get you through this. He can get you through this. Right. this if you lose a loved one, you can sit down to funeral home with somebody and say, I know how it feels. I know what you're going through. Right. If you've been through a, lot, a divorce or if you've been through a, a financial uh, uh, crisis or health-wise, you can always, uh, brother, the preacher Bill, what he's been through the last two years, none of us know, none of us understand. Oh, I felt so sorry for him laying over in that hospital. But somehow or another, God in his son plan, has some kind of plan preacher, that we may not see it now, David didn't see that plan when he's fighting that bear, but buddy when Goliath come up, David said I took care of that, and I took care of that and you ain't going to be no different than they was, God's sovereignty people, amen amen, that gave David a seminary degree yes sir brother he got an honorary doctorate right there buddy, it was of God that he kept them sheep it was of God that that lion and bear, God could have killed them lion and bear. He could have just flipped them off the bank and they'd never bothered David. But he allowed it to come. He allowed it to come. And I say tonight, if you're right with God and you're living for the Lord, nothing can come in your life that God don't allow to come into your life. You're, you're in his hand. My father has a great big family. And there are many children beside me. Amen. And God allows things to come so we can help others. 
Number two, it shows, excuse me, it shows God's protection. It shows God's protection. He took care of his man. One man, one rock, impossible to kill that giant. That giant laughed at David. He come out and he said, good night. Hey, Saul, is that the best you can do? Little boy, like that. get out of here, boy. Before I, before I, I'll feed you to the dogs, boy. I'll make hamburger meat out of you. Know, you want here and leave me alone. And he, he laughed at him. And Goliath made a mistake. He underestimated him and took his helmet off. That's how come he got hit. Them helmets had them still right there. More than likely, I don't think that man didn't have a helmet. I think he had one. And he had took that thing off. And like I said, look, y'all, everybody, <laughs> look who he sent to fight us. A piece of cake. Hey, they're chicken, chicken, and he cursed David by his God. That's the way they're doing us tonight. Hillary called us the deplorables. She cursed us by her gods. And the, 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 the news media, you know, we had that flood up in the mountains there, and uh, people were talking about all those stupid hillbillies. Uh, they're not, but listen, 90% of the work that's been done up there has been mountain people helping other mountain people. That's right. I know some of them personally. Yeah. Yeah. I know a preacher friend. We funneled through $10,000 through our church and helped preach them. They took them generators. They took them food. They took them water. Yeah. And there's a bunch of old redneck boys from West Virginia came in and built a road that the government said would take a year and them boys did it in a week. Because right. they didn't have all these stupid regulations. Oh. You know, let's don't step on one of these spiders that might be extinct in another hundred years. You know, we, we got to have this approved, got to have that. Well, while you're waiting on everything to be approved, they people die and starving to death. Right. Now, let's build a road and get them out of there. That's right. That's right. Amen. And people like that. And people like that. This world laughs at me and you. Yeah, they right. think, that, did you know the average person on the news thinks me and you are ignorant yeah. because yeah. we believe that book right there? Right. They, they, they think we're crazy. Right. Now, we got our own ideas about who's crazy. Yeah. One guy said, oh, you stupid Christians, you believe in talking snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Maher, that fool that has his show on HBO. Yeah. You know why I call him a fool? Because that's what God said he was. Yeah. God said the fool said in his heart there is no God. Right. And I don't want these young people to respect somebody like that. Yeah. Right. I want them to know what he is. Yeah. He said, oh, you stupid Christian. He said the story of Jesus and the virgin birth was the most ridiculous story he's ever heard in his life. They said, oh, you stupid Christians. You believe in talking snakes and that all the, all the dogs in the world come from two dogs. Well, listen here, dumb person, to be nice about it. Ignorant, to be a little more plain. They believe all the dogs in the world come from a rock with soup on it. And they don't know where the rock come from or the soup. Right. Don't talk to us about being dumb, brother. We, we, we know what we believe. We know there's a God that made this whole world and this whole universe. Brother, hey, listen, brother. They're the ones lacking in intelligence. You believe it all come from nothing, you're a nut. Something can't come from nothing. It's impossible. It's impossible. Scientifically impossible for everything to come from nowhere. That's what an atheist believes. Yeah, yeah. So don't make fun of us for believing the Bible. Uh, and they, and he, he liked it at David. But God's protection. God's protection. God took care of him. One man and God is a majority. Amen. Matter of fact, Amen. God's a majority all by himself. You just better get on his side. Amen. That's right. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side. Listen, there's so many stories about God taking care of his men down through history. If you study church history, you read about old John Wesley. John Wesley rode a, rode a horse of 250,000 miles. A horse, y'all. A horse. And uh, preached three and four and time, five times a day. They tried every way in the world to kill him. He's going to preach one night, and these guys were waiting on him to sh uh, kill him like this, right, behind, right around the corner. And he said he got up like this, and his horse just raised up like this. It wouldn't go no further and went back down. And he couldn't understand. His horse raised up and wouldn't let him go. And if it went right around that curve, they was going to ambush him and kill him. And the Lord took care of him, just like he did David. I, I, there's, there's no telling how many times God's took care of me, and I didn't even know it. 
I didn't even know I was in danger. And you too. I drove a car um, over, way over a million miles. Somebody asked me one time, I said, how far you drove? I said, Lord, I don't know. I said, you know, I got uh, one car, 100,000 miles, and I probably had at least 15 or 20 of them. And some of them had 200,000 miles. I probably drove 200, 2 million miles. And oh, my goodness, how many times I've been driving home at night and I've been just, bare, here come a tractor and trailer. One time there's a tractor and trailer coming over like this. And you know, the guardrail right here. And he's coming over like this. You got, a, you got a one half of a split second to decide. If you put on your brakes, somebody will slam into you back here. If you, if you stay right there, you're going to get smashed. And I'll just floor it. Shoot right through that little hole. And just keep going. I can't tell you all the time. It ain't because I'm, I'm great driver. I'm Richard Petty, brother. I'm, I don't have... Listen, I can't tell you the time that I drove home at night and only by the grace of God Almighty that I've got home. And you tell the same story. I'm sure many of you, Brother Danny, this happened, that happened. Normally, I would have been a goner, but somehow or another, God protected me. I, I read about J. Frank Norris, uh, who J. Frank Norris was the granddaddy of the independent Baptist movement in America. And J. Frank Norris passed to that great church out there in uh, Fort Worth, Texas uh, for many, many, many years. And uh, they tried to kill him. They tried to come in his house and shoot and try to burn his house on, down on him. They tried every way in the world. And somebody come in one time and they said, uh, Dr. Norris, there's a lynch mob downtown and they're all gathering together down there and they're going to hang you. And he said, but where are they at? And they said, right down there. He said, tell me exactly where they're at. He, he walked right down there in the middle of that crowd, jumped up on the back of a truck and started preaching. And they wound up saying, oh, give me that old time religion and had a bunch of people saved in there that night. That's God taking care of his man. Peter Cartwright, Peter Cartwright, the old uh, uh, circuit riding Methodist preacher. You know, them old time circuit riding Methodists, they blazed the trail up where we live through that Appalachian, through the uh, Cumberland Valley revivals and all those great revivals up in them mountains. You know why you go up in the mountains and it's, it's a Baptist, it's a Methodist, it's a Baptist, it's a Methodist. You know why there ain't no Catholic churches in North Carolina? They can't find nowhere to build one. There's 10 Baptist churches down every road you go. And it's because of those old time Baptists and old time circuit riding Methodists that preach the Word of God. Old Peter Cartwright, he's about six foot three, black wavy hair and black eyes. Man, he, 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 it wasn't like these Methodists we got now. These Methodists you got nowadays, they're, they're pitiful compared to that bunch back then. Lord, this bunch of, uh, Lord, I don't know what these are nowadays with the gay pastors and women and everything else. But uh, uh, Peter Cartwright was a preacher. They said he stopped in one night and it was pouring the rain and there's a big old barn dance going on. And it's, it's pouring the rain, it's out cold and everything. He had his hat in there and he walked in there and there was that dance and all that, that pretty like that. And he said, he said a, a real attractive young lady walked up to him and said, Sir, would you like to dance? And he said, Yes, ma'am, be glad to. And he, he, he took her hand like this and he said, I never do nothing without asking God to bless it. Hold on. And he grabbed her hand and milled down and said, Oh, God, I pray. God, I mean, brother, he prayed. She heard a jerky like that trying to get away from it. And he had a hold of her like that. And they said the power of God fell in that place. And a bunch of people got saved and they started a church in that building right there. You know what? That's God's protection. That's God's protection. I'm going to tell you tonight, if you'll go in Jesus' name and you'll do right and you'll serve God, you can't die until God gets ready for you to. You are invincible until the Lord gets ready to take you home. That's right. God's protection. And then it shows God's plan. God's plan was this. Little as much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win. The Bible's full of stories like that. Samson had an ox goat. A jawbone of an ass slew a thousand men. God always takes little things and does big things so that he'll get the glory and show us his power and his plan. David had a sling. Rahab had a little string hanging out the window of those, that, those walls and saved her and her family. Moses just had that little rod. Stuck that rod out there and the water parted up like that. Little as much when God is in it. 
Another thing God's plan was, an old saying, the bigger they are, that's right, buddy. That's right. Boy, you going down, big boy. I can't imagine seeing a guy that big. That's a big man, brother. I mean, his thighs right here is probably that big around. Strong. A man of war. David said the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And then finally he said, righteousness always wins over wickedness. Amen. And I'll leave y'all with this thought tonight. If I go back to North Carolina tomorrow, Lord willing, I'll leave you with this thought. People, we are few in number. The truth is, the big majority of the, of the people in Lee County, is that, ain't this Lee County? The big majority of this people in this county don't even know we're here or they don't even care. We made a dent in this world. But I'm telling you something. One day, the shoe's going to be on the other foot. When the Lord comes back and rules this thing, buddy, we're going to be right there with him. And you, you might be made fun of now. Your neighbors might think you're crazy you're going to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, revival. They might think, oh, my goodness, well, you fanatic. You know that. You just hang around a while. One of these blessed days Amen. we'll be on the Lord's side Amen. and Jesus in Revelation 19 will come back and rule and reign and we'll reign with him. It shows God's plan. Why did David choose five smooth stones? I don't know for sure but I know one thing that story's not in the Bible by accident and God had a purpose in what he did. I don't know what you're facing tonight. Come to the instruments, please. I don't know what you're facing. It might be a heart attack. It might be cancer. It might be a loss of job or something. I don't, I don't know. I know one thing. Stuff happens. Yeah. Stuff happens to Christians. Yeah. You may be going through a divorce. You may have just lost your wife. You may have just, well, and you say, preacher, I don't see how I'm going to make it. I have a friend of mine that told me the other day, that live in Burnsville, North Carolina. It's about probably 45 minutes up from where we live. And she said those, a lot of those mountain people that are not saved are committing suicide. They lost everything, lost everything they have. Lost everything they have. I mean, they don't have flood insurance. It's never, it's never happened before since Noah's time. I mean, who thinks it's going to flood up on top of the mountain? We never, we never had hurricanes. The mountains surround us. You know, hurricanes hit them things and they just go the other way. But this time, they said it hit those mountains and the mountains were like a dam and it just stopped. and Dumped 30 inches of rain on the ground that's already soaking wet from two or three days before that. And now that water got to go somewhere. It ain't like here where it just sinks down in the sand. It goes down like this. And there's places where People stood there and watched their house go down the river. Lots of them, lots of them. 126,000 houses were either damaged or completely destroyed. One of our church members, a young couple, lost their home, brand new house. They don't live three miles from our church and it's near, near a river. It got up where it's about as high as them curtains there inside their brand new house. They had to be rescued. They was taking people out in boats and this one man that I told you about the other night, they come to him and he's almost dead and he's buried in mud up to here. And they said, we're going to try to save him. He said, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I'll die here. And they say, sir, you don't want to die. He said, yeah, well, I won't die. I've done lost my family and everything. They said, how do you know? He said, my wife and, and daughter is under me. And he said, I could feel them scratching my legs. And, and he said, there wasn't nothing I could do. And he said, they're gone. My house is gone. My income's gone. Just let me die here. They didn't have no hope. But on the other hand, some of them old saints of God are gathering in churches. And they're singing. The old, old sister that come to our camp meeting the other night, she's about 90 years old, lived by herself up on Patterson Branch in the mountains. And she, she walked the floor and prayed. And not one limb fell on her house. God had his hand on it. And people, that's a picture 
of the storms of life that come to everybody. Yeah. Everything you can see, there's a picture of something you can't see. That's, right. That's, right. That's, that's like a divorce. That's like a cancer. That's like all these terrible words that we don't want to hear. Right. Yeah. If you'll do right, serve God. Commit your life to Him. Yeah. The Lord will take care of you. Amen. I want us to end the scheduled revival services tonight by just crowding around this altar and say, Lord, earth is a place for trust. Heaven's a place for understanding. Yeah. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. What number is it, brother? 489. 489. Let's all stand by our heads. Father, do something here tonight. Help that man, that woman, that boy, that girl here tonight who maybe needs to come and trust you with everything they have. Help us, Lord, to trust you. Help us, Lord, not to doubt. God, do it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Put your life in God's hand, in the hands of the Lord. He'll, he'll bless you. Let's sing together tonight. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen.